Now let's talk about how to represent matter or in particle diagrams, all right? But before we do that, what I want you to do is to underline any unique patterns you see and analyze those unique patterns to determine whether you have a substance or a mixture. Let's remember, and I want you to memorize this while you're doing this, is that substances have the same composition and properties everywhere, meaning they look the same everywhere. So if every all the patterns look the same, you have either an element or a compound. If the patterns look different at all, however, you have a mixture. So make sure you keep these in mind. If everything looks the same, you have a substance. If everything, if something looks different at all, it's a mixture. All right. <clears throat> so first, let's talk about elements. In the particle diagram, um, in a particle diagram, elements are represented by a one color particle. That means the particle only has one color that repeats its pattern at least once. So let's see a color-coded example below, but let's note that elements are one color particles that repeat their patterns at least once. So I have, I have these color coded below in blue for aluminum or Al and nitrogen gas or N2, but I'm going to cross these out because you have to be able to recognize um, which particle diagrams represent elements, compounds, and mixtures without even knowing the name. So let's practice that. All right, so first of all, for this first example, by the way, you should, be, you should have crossed these out. The only unique pattern is one gray circle. All right, so I go from there. First of all, um, I see that this has to be a pure substance because everything looks exactly the same. So it's either an element or compound. So from there, let's narrow it down even further. Now that I've underlined the pattern and established it's a substance, let's figure out which one it is. Let's remember that um, elements are one color particles that repeat their patterns at least once. As we can see here, the only unique pattern is a one color particle that repeats uh, one color particle. The one color particle is um, a one gray circle. So the first condition for elements is met. In addition, it repeats its patterns three times, here, here, and here. So both conditions are met. Since you're, you have a one color particle, one gray circle that repeats its patterns three times, you have an element. Okay? Now, for this one, we know um, it's an element, but we'll establish that in a minute. First of all, we have to underline the only unique unit, which is two blue circles attached to each other. Okay? So, uh, yeah. What we see from this only one unique pattern is that um, is that everything is the same, so we know it's a substance. It's either an element or a compound. Since we know that it is an element or a compound based on the fact that everything looks the same, um, we have to establish what it is specifically. First of all, we see that the first condition for an element is met because the only unique pattern that we see here is a one color particle, specifically two blue circles attached to each other, right? So it is a one color particle, specifically two blue circles attached to each other. And let's see if the second condition is met. This two blue circle pattern repeats itself twice here and here. So now the second condition is met. Since this is um, a one color particle, two blue circles that repeats its patterns twice here and here, we know that this also represents an element, okay? Next, we have compounds, and compounds are two or more different colors that are attached to each other, and they repeat their patterns at least once. So let's, uh, I color-coded this in red down here, but let's cross out this for water, H2, and this for ammonia, and H3, okay? So what you have to do here is you have to underline the unique unit and see if it repeats its patterns or if it's different. So um, I underlined the only unique pattern, which is one red, two white, um, and then I have to establish whether it's a substance. It is a substance because all these look the same. They're all one red, two white. Since it's all the same, we, have to, we know that it's either a um, compound or an element, right? So let's establish what it is. First of all, let's see if the first condition for either is met. Uh, a compound has two or more different colors. In this one unique unit, I can see uh, two or more different colors attached. I see one red and two whites. So the two different colors are red and white. So the first condition is met. So the two different colors, red and white, are attached, specifically one red, two white. Let's see if it repeats so that we can establish whether it's a compound. Um, it does repeat its pattern because one red, two white appears here, here, and here. So the second condition is met. Therefore, this is a particle diagram of a compound because you have two or more different colors attached in the unique pattern, one red, two white, and it repeats its patterns three times here, here, and here. Here, the one unique pattern is one blue, three white, and we know it's a substance because um, it repeats everywhere. It's the same everywhere, so we know it's a substance. It's either an element or a compound. Let's establish what it is. First of all, we see that there are two different colors attached 
um, and the unique pattern. Specifically, there's one blue attached to three white. All right, so the two different colors are blue and white, specifically one blue, three white. So the first condition for a compound is met. Next, we see that the pattern repeats here and here twice. So since the pattern repeats at least once, we also meet this condition. Therefore, this represents a compound because it's two or more different colors attached, blue attached to three white, that repeats its patterns twice here and here. Okay? Mixtures are different patterns in any way, shape, or form. So if the number or the color of different particles appear the same somehow, then it's different patterns, and they're color-coded here below. All right, um, but I also want you to note homogeneous mixtures and heterogeneous mixtures look different. Specifically, homogeneous mixtures are different patterns that are evenly spread out in a one-to-one -one ratio, and the particles are paired up together in four corners, and I've color-coded this in orange below. Uh, heterogeneous mixtures are different patterns that are unevenly spread out in different layers with the different number of particles in each layer. So mixtures in general are different patterns in either number or color between the separate particles, and I've color-coded these in purple here. Homogeneous mixtures are mixtures that are evenly spread out in a one-to-one -one ratio in four corners, which are color-coded in orange, and heterogeneous mixtures are, diff are um, mixtures that are unevenly spread out um, in different layers with a different number of particles in each layer, okay? So let's first establish that mixtures um, have different patterns. Another thing I didn't mention before, and I apologize for that, is you can find the types of substances involved in the mixture by looking at each individual unique pattern. Let's remember elements are only one colored particles that repeat patterns, whereas compounds are two or more different colored particles attached that repeat patterns. All right, so um, let's remember mixtures are different patterns, and let's determine what kind of mixture specifically they are in terms of like whether there are two elements, two compounds, or one element, one compound. Okay. So, um, in this um, in this particle diagram, I underline the two. Uh, I underline any unique patterns. The two unique patterns are one green and one brown, right? So we know we have two unique patterns. Therefore, since it's not the same everywhere, based on our definition from like one of the very first slides, we know this is a mixture. Let's find out what it's a mixture of, right? This is a one colored particle green that repeats here, 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 and here. So we know this first one is an element, which I'll label E. The second particle we can also see is an element because it's a one color particle brown that repeats itself here, 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 and here. So we see that pattern one, the green one, is an element, and pattern two brown is an element because they're both one colored particles that repeat throughout. Therefore, we see that we have a mixture here of two elements in particular. All right, and this next one, um, we see we have a mixture because if we underline the two unique patterns here and here, um, we see that not everything looks the same throughout, so it's a mixture. Let's find out what kind of mixture it is. Even without knowing what's involved in this, um, we can see it's a mixture because it's because the patterns are somehow different. All right, the two different patterns are the are um, as follows. Number one is one brown circle and pattern two is one, one, one red, one black. So let's break this down and analyze them very carefully. The first pattern is one brown circle that repeats three times. So it's one, it's a one colored pattern, sorry, one colored particle that repeats at least once. It's a one colored particle brown that repeats three times. Since it's a one color particle brown that repeats three times, this one is an element. The second pattern, however, let's look at that. We see that this pattern is two or more different colors attached, red and black. Since it's two or more different colors attached, we think it might be a compound. Let's verify that. This one red, one black, these two different colors attached repeat here, 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 and here, so it repeats three times. Since it's two different colored particles, red and black, that repeat, we see that this, we, this uh, second pattern is a compound. So therefore, we see that based on the fact that this is a one brown particle that repeats itself and one red, one black particle attached that repeats itself, at, we see that we have a mixture of an element, the brown circle, and a compound, the one red, one black. All right, um, here we see that we have a mixture because um, the patterns aren't the same. One is two red and one is three red. So it's definitely a mixture. Of what in particular? Let's find out. Um, the mixture here um, involves two red for the first pattern and three red for the second pattern. So let's see that. Um, the first particle, or the first pattern, is a uh, 
true circle red particle that repeats itself once down here. All right. So we know that since it's a say, it's a one color particle that repeats itself once down here, it's an element, right? And for the second pattern, we see that it's a it's a one color particle, three red circles that repeats its pattern once down here. Since it's a one color particle, which is three red circles that repeats itself once down here, this is also an element. But wait, let's also notice that we um, see that they're all the same color. So even though they're a mixture, since their patterns are different, they're of the same element. The reason why they're the same element is because they're the same color. So since they're the same color, but they have different patterns, you have different forms of the same element, okay? This really quickly I'll just go through is a mixture of two compounds. How you know is the first unique pattern is one red, one blue. So there are two different colors attached and it repeats itself down here. Since it's a two different color attached that repeats itself down here, this is a compound. This is the next different pattern and it's um, a two different color pattern, black and red attached that repeats itself over here. So since it's a two different color pattern, red and black that repeats itself over here, it's a compound. This is one unique compound, that's another unique compound. Since you have two different compounds, it's a mixture of two different compounds. All right, um, this is gonna go by really quick. This first uh, pattern right here, we see is a heterogeneous mixture. How we know it's a heterogeneous mixture is because you have uneven distribution in layers. Um, it's a mixture because you have two separate patterns, one black, four white, one red, two white. Right, so we have two separate patterns, so we know it's a mixture. How we know it's heterogeneous is because the one red, two whites are all in a separate layer from the one black, four white. This is also um, a heterogeneous mixture because you have uneven distribution in layers. So um, you have one green, which as we know represents an element, so it's, since it's a one color pattern, green, that repeats itself at least once. So that's an element. And we know that this is um, of a compound because it's one red, two white, right? Now, we know it's a heterogeneous mixture in particular because the compound um, structure, one red, two white, is in one layer. And the element structure, one green circle, is in the bottom layer. Since they're in two separate layers and they're a mixture, obviously, based on their different patterns, this is a heterogeneous mixture. This is a homogeneous mixture because it's a one-to-one -one ratio. They're spread out evenly in corners. Um, everything's evenly distributed. You can tell this is a mixture because um, the patterns are different. One's one red, two white. The other is one black, one red. All right, so it's a mixture. How you know it's a homogeneous mixture is because um, all the particles are separated in separate corners. This one red, two white is paired, with, paired up with this one black, one red right here, and this one red, two white is paired up with this one black, one red, white, right here, okay? So they're in separate corners in a one-to-one -one ratio, one water to one CO, one water to one CO. So it's a homogeneous mixture because they're different patterns, but they're spread out evenly. This is of O2 and Fe. Um, it's a homogeneous mixture because everything's spread out evenly. This represents an element, obviously, because it's a one color particle brown that repeats its patterns here, 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 and here. It repeats three times. So this brown circle represents an element. This also represents an element because it's a one color particle, two red circles that repeats itself here, here, and here. So we have a mixture of two different elements, right? It's homogeneous because um, not only is it a mixture of two different elements, but they're in four separate corners spread out evenly. Specifically, one brown um, Fe pairs up with one red O2. One brown Fe pairs up with one red O2. One brown Fe pairs up with one red O2. One brown Fe pairs up with one red O2. Since it's evenly spread out in a one-to-one -one ratio, one brown O2 to one red, uh, sorry, one red O2 to one brown Fe, in each corner we see that's a homogeneous mixture because it's spread out evenly. Okay, so just remember in any particle diagram, a one color particle that repeats itself at least once is an element. A two or more differently colored particle that repeats itself at least once is a compound and anything with different patterns is um, a mixture. If the particles are spread out evenly in corners and in, in like even ratios, it's a homogeneous mixture and if they're spread out unevenly in layers, it's a heterogeneous mixture. All right, please go over these guided practice questions on your own and complete, please complete these homework assignments for the next class. Thank you very much.